swivel chair, a motorized swivel chair to nudge users orientation for three degree, 360 degree storytelling in virtual reality. And for presentation, we have Jan Guggenheimer. Thanks, Bob. Oh. Let me try not to break the cable here. Works. Great. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, my name is Jan Guggenheimer. I'm going to present the works with a chair that was done with my colleagues at Ulm University in Germany. Um, I'm going to start by showing you the system that we built. So what we did, we basically modified, oh yeah, that's good. Uh, we modified the swivel chair um, with a motor to be able to nudge users in virtual reality in 360 degree storytelling. Um, all the footage, all the video footage you're going to see is about um, real study footage that we recorded in our user study. I'm gonna go a little bit on the motivation. I mean, I think this year is going to be a big year for virtual reality in terms of consumer VR. It's going to be released, the HTC Vive, the Oculus Rift, all the consumer versions are out. And people are thinking what experience, what kind of experience is people going to be using in VR. And one thing is obviously gaming. And the other thing that we were looking into is storytelling. How is it to watch, uh, watch a movie or cinematic experience in VR actually being there? And if you think about the medium itself, VR, compared to traditional movie telling, it's probably going to be a bigger step than from um, theater to movie. It's going to be a bigger step from movie to VR. And the fundamental thing that you're actually missing is a, is a frame, which you have in every movie, in every storytelling. And this frame itself, um, if you think about it, uh, in, in art is... Um, so if someone tells a movie, uh, if someone tells a story in a movie, he looks into the composition and the arrangement of objects inside of this frame. And this is a wonderful quote with a cinema in its purest form visual storytelling to simple arrangement of images. And what all these, uh, what um, traditional movie tellers do, or uh, storytellers do, is with this arrangement, they, for instance, guide our attention inside of this frame, or they hide certain things from us. And there are certain rules, and Alfred Hitchcock was one of the, one of the big things he would work this. For instance, uh, rules of the size of an object inside of this frame. It's gotta be relevant to the importance of the story. Or a beautiful example here, um, a frame in frame is also a technique in this thing where we get our attention to Dustin Hoffman. So the author leads our attention to Dustin, but it also conveys a certain message because the frame that was done is through the lag of Miss Robinson. So it also has a sexual tension here. And for all these things, you actually use, you have a frame. And if you think about VR, a lot of things in storytelling, people say, you don't have a frame. You have to think outside of the frame, which is, which is basically not true. You, you will always have a frame. You will always have a field of view or something. The only thing that you lose in VR, in 360-degree storytelling, is the control of the person. And with control, it's going to be, um, gonna be it's, it's difficult to say control because um, what we need to do, we need to take a step back first and think about um, traditional storytelling. So what we know from cinemas... If you experience a movie, it, it is um, based on Boss Model, it is a lean back experience. So you sit in a chair, you watch the movie. A game, on the other hand, is a lean forward experience. So you're kind of engaged, you play a lot. And what 360 degree movie telling is going to be, it's, it's, it's a mix of both of this. So we have to combine both of it. So when I'm going to say control, what I used here, we don't want to fully control it. And this is why we call it nudging. Um, I'm going to go over the implementation that we had. So what we did is we modified a traditional swivel chair with a motor, gearbox, and a clutch, and uh, showed this. So we have a motor here, we have the gearbox. Um, we control everything through a motor shield connected to an Arduino, connected to a Samsung Gear VR. And the clutch is the essential part here, because we don't force the user to look to a certain direction. We nudge him, so we can rotate him, but every time the user decides he doesn't want to be rotated, he can break free. He can just put his feet on the ground, and he can break out of the rotation and turn himself wherever he wants. So we don't take away the power here. We just telling him this is maybe something you want to look at. And the connection from the tooth belt to the chair shaft that we have. <laughs> so this is how the implementation works. We have a chair that we can um, control the rotation. We have a sensor, a house sensor at the bottom of it, so we know, always know the rotation of the chair. We know the rotation of the user itself. So what we did, we were scared initially. Oh, first, the concepts that we create now, the basic narratives that we have now. One is we can guide a user's attention now. We can turn him to certain positions and show him certain compositions that the author can create inside of this 360-degree scene. And also a new interesting narrative that we came up with is um, the blocking of something. So in this scenario, for instance, you can, the user can hear a monster approaching from the back, but he cannot turn back. He will see its shadow, 
but the uh, chair will block him. Of course, if he like actually wants to turn back, he he can. He can break free. But if he wants to experience this, he wants to be immersed. He can just accept it. And initially, when we built it, we were scared about what we created. Uh, vomit comments. We, 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 we turning people on a chair, we just get it's got to be a lot of simulator sickness things. So we run an uh, initial evaluation. I'm just going to go quick over the evaluation. For details, please look into the note. Um, we had 18 participants, and we used two conditions one with the motorized chair, one without the motorized chair. And we wanted to measure for um, immersion engagement and measure for simulator sickness. And we created two demo scenes. One with a little witch house, which you can explore. One with a warehouse, where you can look around and see. And we created little, little stories that you would go through. And we let people experience this. So once again, this is real study footage. One interesting thing that we found is that people felt more relaxed using the chair. And they accepted the rotation. Because what ended up uh, coming up is that they didn't have the pressure of looking around, trying to find where the next narrative is going to start. They didn't have the feeling of missing out. They just relaxed. They had this lean back experience. And another interesting thing was um, they also enjoyed, or just, just did as well, the fighting rotation, where the participant said, okay, this participant should be rotated, actually, but she decided, no, I don't want to. I don't want to be rotated. I want to continue looking here. And at one point, she's going to give in, and she's going to be rotated to the direction that we're going um, <laughs> to, uh, we want to. Um, in terms of the data, so we had less simulator sickness. We expect this because the people with the chair were looking around less in VR. They, they had less head movements because they were more to lean back and actually looked forward. So we assume this is one of the reasons. In terms of enjoyment and presence, we had significantly higher um, enjoyment and presence. So in conclusion, what we presented, we presented the concept how to nudge attention in VR for storytelling. And um, we showed the technical implementation and show the um, initial user study how um, it impacts immersion and simulator sickness. That's it. <laughs> we, we do have time for a few questions. Was good in time? It was in seven. Um, that's very nice work. Uh, um, actually, I thought your point about the framing, uh, I haven't really seen discussed at, at this conference before, and it, I think it's a very salient point. And I understand your, your chair is a way of sort of dealing with that, but can you maybe elaborate a little bit more on, you know, how fundamental the breakdown of, of movie making might be in a virtual reality environment where users can essentially you know, choose their own frame. You know, is that a fundamental problem? I mean, this is one thing. I mean, um, I think VR storytelling is going to be, partially it's going to still have old concepts from movie telling that we have right now, but it's also going to create new and evolve. And we kind of, of course, uh, this, this is a good argument, we're kind of trying to stick to old, old things that you have, but are incredibly powerful as well. So um, I think it's going to be a mix of both. The same from traditional, um, how can I say, uh, theater to movie, this, this, this transition they had. They had some parts that they took, but also movie telling, um, cinema created new technologies and new transitions like um, cu several cuts or things like this, not just one stage. So it's got to be a, a mix of this, and this is kind of what we try to do. We, we kind of have this, this, this mix of this new thing and the old um, experience. Too. Yeah, I think it's one thing, and gaming is really poorly done, is you get these sort of cinematic explanations of what your next action is, and yeah. then you get the first-person shooter, and I think it's awful to have these kinds of yeah. you know, mixed modes. So I think there's really a lot of work to be done in that area. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jan. Thank you for talk. Uh, this, is the, the, this is the end of the session. I'd like to thank all the speakers, and I would like, also like to thank all the all, uh, people uh, listening to the speakers. I think it's uh, time for lunch.